Hello and welcome to Drugs Plus. Whether you're here for exam revision or just general interest, I hope you find this video useful. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support this channel so that I'm able to continue creating this content. This video is about the pharmacological treatments for heart failure, known as positive inotropes. Heart failure is a condition whereby the heart is unable to pump sufficient blood around the body in order to adequately perfuse tissues with oxygen. Among other symptoms, this can cause muscle fatigue and peripheral edema and is one of the leading causes of morbidity in the UK. For a more detailed description of the condition itself, you can see my dedicated video, the link for which I'll provide below. Positive inotropes act by increasing intracellular concentrations of calcium in ventricular cardiomyocytes. This means that more actin myosin cross bridges are able to form and the heart muscle will contract with more force, relieving the immediate short term effects of decreased cardiac output. The first class of positive inotrope I'm going to discuss are cardioglycosides, such as digitalis and uabane. These drugs inhibit the sodium potassium transport proteins on cardiomyocyte cell membranes. This means that less sodium is extruded from the cell and therefore its intracellular concentration increases. This has an effect on sodium calcium exchanger proteins, also in cardiomyocyte cell membranes. As intracellular sodium concentration is increased, the concentration gradient between the outside and inside of the cell is decreased and so the rate at which it enters the cell via this protein is diminished. Consequently, the rate at which calcium is extruded from the cell via the same protein is also diminished, meaning intracellular calcium concentration is also increased, ready to facilitate the formation of actin-myosin cross bridges, increasing cardiac output. The next class of positive inotrope used for heart failure is the beta-1 agonist, such as denopamine and dobutamine. This may sound counterintuitive, as beta-1 antagonists are used for the treatment for heart failure too, as outlined in last week's video. However, we must remember that positive inotropes are only used for the immediate emergency treatment of heart failure, and their use would be adverse in the long term. Beta-1 adrenoceptors are GS protein coupled, meaning that activation by beta-1 agonists result in the activation of adenyl cyclase, which converts ATP to cyclic AMP. This second messenger goes on to activate protein kinase A, which goes on to phosphorylate L-type calcium channels, causing them to remain open for longer at this beginning of diastole. This results in increased calcium entry into the cardiomyocytes, and therefore more calcium available to facilitate the formation of actin-myosin cross bridges, increasing cardiac output. Phosphodiesterase inhibitors such as amrinone and anuximone act on the same process as the beta-1 agonists. The PDE protein breaks down cyclic AMP molecules, preventing the activation of protein kinase A and its downstream effects, as listed previously. PDE inhibitors, therefore, prevent this breakdown of cyclic AMP and increase the downstream effects of PKA. Again, this results in increased calcium entry into the cardiomyocytes and therefore more calcium available to facilitate the formation of actin-myosin cross bridges, increasing cardiac output. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support this channel so I'm able to continue creating this content. I'll be back with more videos soon.